Well, let's go at it again. Good morning to all of you. My name is Julien Guerrier. I'm the Commission's Director for the Common Policy Center for Horizon Europe. And I want to welcome you very warmly to these EU Missions Info Days. These are the first Info Days we have for missions because the missions were officially launched on the 29th of September last year, following two years of very intensive work involving not only all Commission Directorates General, but also the Member States, Associated Countries, citizens, stakeholders, and together we engaged in a very ambitious co-design and co-creation process to, to um, prepare those five missions, fighting cancer, adapting to climate change, protecting our oceans, seas and waters, living in greener cities and ensuring healthy soil and food. Those challenges were identified and defined by European citizens together with us. And the novelty of missions is that they are really solution oriented. They have very clear targets for 2030, so a foreseeable future. And they will direct our efforts in research and innovation for the next eight years, but not only in, in research and innovation, in a number of implementation fields in order to roll out on the ground the solutions that will have been developed by research and innovation. Our objective is to maximize the economic and social value of every euro we invest uh, in those missions in order uh, for them to be a um, very uh, novel whole of government instrument in the European research and innovation funding landscape. It will be funded by Horizon Europe, but also by other programs at European and national levels. We have already launched, actually, even before the official launch of the missions, a number of small horizontal calls for missions in order to prepare the ground uh, that was done in June of last year. Those calls paved the way for the scaling up and the new calls that are going to be introduced today and that are the real full rollout of the missions work program. These new calls will enable us uh, to hopefully uh, reach these uh, ambitious objectives that we have set for the European Green Deal, for Europe fit for the digital age, for the beating cancer action plan and an economy that works for people as overarching priorities of this um, commission. The missions have an objective to create a healthier, greener, digital Europe for its citizens at the horizon of 2030 and the results of the calls will really be key to achieve these targets. Now, uh, during these uh, info days, we will have more information given to you on how to prepare for these calls, how to uh, uh, find uh, the right um, uh, partners uh, for your consortia, and we will present to you uh, the wide range of calls that are being launched now. The five missions, as I mentioned a bit earlier, are adaptation to climate change, restore our ocean and wat waters by 2030, a soil deal for Europe cancer mission, and the 100 climate neutral and smart cities that we want to have in the EU by 2030. These uh, calls were launched um, just before Christmas for most of them. And with this new work program, uh, we want to roll out, implement these research and innovation aspects of the missions for the first stage of the implementation phase. We will start today by the OCEANS mission, Restore Our Ocean and Waters by 2030. You will then have a second session after lunch with uh, the cancer colleagues and the day will be closed on, uh, with a, a session focusing on how to prepare and submit a successful proposal. Tomorrow, we will continue and have three sessions for the three other missions, Adaptation to Climate Change, the 100 Climate Neutral and Smart Cities by 2030, and the Soil Deal for Europe mission. This will conclude those two days of information on uh, the, the five missions and the calls that we have launched. We really invite a mobilization of all researchers and innovators across Europe, as well as citizens and all interested stakeholders 
uh, in order to take part in these five missions and to ensure that they are successful. We will open the floor for questions during each session and we will hope to have uh, full information uh, for you to prepare top quality proposals. I wish you success in your preparatory work. I want to emphasize um, uh, the importance of those missions for Europe and the importance of the best brains and uh, creativity across Europe uh, to contribute, uh, to deliver on them. They will mobilize many other policy areas, funding, programs uh, and support of, at uh, European national and regional level. This is the vision that we have in mind to have missions that are cross-sectoral, that go beyond research and innovation to deliver solutions on the ground and that bring together not only horizontally all levels of governments, but also vertically from the European level to the local level. We are counting on you to achieve these uh, targets uh, with us and I wish you two exciting days today and tomorrow with our colleagues. Thanks a lot for your attention.
So good morning, colleagues. Good morning, participants. To this uh, info days dedicated session on EU mission restore our ocean and waters by 2030. I would like to thank my colleague Julien for uh, the introductory words he made opening the day regarding all the EU missions. And I would like to introduce also myself. I am uh, Christos Economou. I am the acting director in Digimare dealing with maritime policy and blue economy. And I'm the mission manager for this particular mission uh, on ocean and waters. I would like to recall what Julian said, that the EU missions are one of the main novelties of the new research and innovation program Horizon Europe under its pillar two named Global Challenges and in European Industrial Competitiveness. The EU missions are expected to support Europe's transformation into a greener, healthier, more inclusive and resilient society. They aim to bring tangible benefits to people in Europe and engage Europeans in their design, implementation and monitoring. Following the adoption of the European missions by the Commission in 29 September 2021, the missions have now entered their operational phase. The aim of today's event is to provide information on the new calls and funding opportunities included in the amendment of Horizon Europe Work Programme for 21-22, which was adopted on 16 December last year. In particular, we have the pleasure to present the topics that will launch the first wave of activities of the EU mission, Restore Our Ocean and Waters by 2030. The Horizon Europe Work Programme amendment has been co-created by the European Ser Commission services and member states. For the mission Ocean and Waters, more than 10 Directorate Generals, uh, Directorate Generals of the Commission have regularly participated to the co-creation of this first work program. However, DG Mare and DG RTD, as you know, steer the process from the initial ideas to the drafting and the publication of the work program. The executive agency for the mission Ocean and Waters is CINEA, the European Climate, Infrastructure and Environment Executive Agency. officers in policy DGs and project officers in CINEA. The work program is designed to implement the priorities and actions agreed in the implementation plan for the mission, which as I said was issued by the Commission last September and is available in the Commission website. Now, by applying to calls, the applicants are joining a collective endeavor a joint mission to restore our oceans and waters. As such, the applicants and successful projects will be encouraged, will be encouraged to connect, exchange and cooperate to make change happen on the ground. The first work program supports the development and piloting phase of the ocean mission which runs up to 2025. Special emphasis is placed to the concept of the mission lighthouses to be activated in four European sea and river basins. They are conceived as project portfolios and will be the main implementation vehicle of the mission in this first phase. I would like to recall that one preparatory coordinating a support action topic to support the setup of these area-based lighthouses was already published in June 21 in the first Horizon Europe work program for 21-22 and uh, asked to establish link with it. So I already referred to the concept of the lighthouses 
and this will be further explained in the next presentation. However, let me stress one thing. The lighthouses are not just one project. They are not just one demonstration project. They include all actions needed to implement the respective mission objectives. They are hubs for the development and deployment of solutions and platforms for mobilizing, convening and connecting the relevant actors and initiatives at sea basin level. The Mission Ocean Work programs, Program, this one particularly, follows the impact-driven logic of Horizon Europe. The actions that will be presented this morning aim at supporting key overarching EU priorities stemming from the European Green Deal, such as the Sustainable Blue Economy Strategy, the EU Biodiversity Strategy, the Zero, the Zero Pollution Action Plan. The work program 2021 is organized around three main calls for proposals addressing three policy objectives. First, protect and restore marine and freshwater ecosystems and biodiversity. Second, prevent and eliminate, eliminate pollution of our ocean, seas and waters. And third, ensure a sustainable, carbon neutral and circular blue economy. The call for enabling activities will support the development of a digital knowledge system, the digital twin ocean, public engagement initiatives, foresight and other studies. The, I would like to give also some broad indications on the budget allocated to the mission. Horizon Europe provides initial funding to the five missions that Julien explained of up to uh, 1.9 billion euros for the first three years until 2023, of which 344 uh, million, about uh, 344, I repeat, million are allocated to the mission ocean and waters. The indicative budget for this mission in 2021 work program is 114 million. So now let me recall that the calls and the topics that you will be listening about today have been officially uh, open since 22nd of December last year, with a deadline for submitting proposals by 12th April 2022. So I'm sure you keep in mind this important date. So from my side, I would like to thank you for your interest in this work, recall the importance of your participation to the mission, contributing to this with uh, the um, very uh, challenging and uh, very um, ambitious proposal, I would hope. And of course, I would encourage you to uh, be part of this mission, contributing and applying to, uh, to the calls. I would like now to give the floor to my colleagues, Andrea Stracinescu from DigiMare, Head of Unit DigiMare, and Elisabetta Balzi from DGRTD, Head of Unit in DGRTD, and uh, leading both the mission secretariat for a general presentation of the, uh, the, this particular mission and uh, what I already touched upon, the uh, basin scale lighthouses. So uh, that's all from my side. I would uh, wish you all a very constructive uh, day and uh, I hope that we all uh, meet uh, at the end of the journey with reaching our targets for this mission. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Christo. Uh, we will pass the floor to Andrea and Elisabetta very soon. Uh, they will be with us in order to present uh, the presentation on the, of the mission and uh, lighthouses. from the digital 
Good morning. Uh, and my colleague, um, Andrea Strachinescu, we would like to provide you with a short introduction on our mission, Restore Our Ocean and Waters. Uh, its rationale, its intervention logic, the objectives and targets, the implementation phases, and the planned activities. Uh, as illustrated already by our directors and previous speakers, the EU missions are new strategic broad mobilization initiatives which are promoted by the European Commission to bring concrete solutions to the greatest challenges of our time, and in our case, the challenge is restoring our ocean, seas, and waters. They have very ambitious goals, and they are expected to deliver concrete results in a very short time frame by 2030. And uh, they are inspired by missions like the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. And by analogy, we could say that our mission is a new ocean shot. And uh, a main novelty and distinguishing feature of a mission is that indeed they entail a new collaborative and systemic approach uh, to, uh, to address the societal challenges. And this approach combines research innovation with new forms of governance. Missions are rooted in the Europe, uh, Horizon Europe Research Innovation Program, as they do have an important core of research and innovation, but their scope goes far beyond research and innovation and this EU program. So missions are expected to be implemented across different programs, policies, and sectors with both public and private investment at EU national, regional, and local level. And also, very importantly, European missions connect directly to the citizens, and they aim to engage the citizens in the design, implementation, and monitoring of a mission. So uh, a first general message is that while we are here today to present indeed what our Horizon Europe program is offering this year to implement this mission, we would also like to encourage you to consider also, at the same time, all possible other instruments, initiatives, and actions to help reaching the goal of this mission at local level. Because only with a broad public mobilization involving member states, regions, local authorities, international partners, and the citizens at large, we will be able to reach the ambitious goal of this mission. Uh, as it has already been highlighted, all missions, including ours, have been launched on 29 of September. And uh, what is very important, the document which is very important, and I would like to attract your attention on that, is the implementation plan that is publicly available, because this implementation plan is the basis uh, for all our calls and further actions. Uh, then in the next slide, we see that uh, uh, actually a very important characteristic of our mission, the previous slide, uh, it's the systemic approach of restoring our oceans and water. So we are addressing what we call the hydrosphere, intended as the all connected systems of ocean, seas, coast, and inland waters. And this systemic approach is inspired by the so-called known Starfish Report, which is a report which was produced by the mission board, uh, external experts uh, led by uh, Pascal Lamy. And uh, we, you see that this starfish actually with five legs, it's actually symbolic for what are the objectives and the enablers of our mission. We present you the three objectives and two enablers, and you see that there are five legs indeed in the starfish. Uh, in terms of policy drive, in the next slide, we see that the main driver of our mission is certainly the European Green Deal and its objectives. case blue economy, including food, energy, and mobility systems. And the basic principle underlying our mission is that there cannot be a Green Deal without blue. So the European Union can only fulfill its European Green Deal objectives by restoring the good health of the hydrosphere, which covers around 75% of the Earth's surface. And there is an urgency to act. So in this slide, you see uh, the overall objective of our mission, which is restoring our ocean and waters by 2030. And then we have three specific objectives, specifically protecting and restoring marine and freshwater ecosystems and their biodiversity. This is in line, of course, with the EU biodiversity strategy. For each of the specific objectives, we have specific targets. And here we are aiming at protecting a minimum of 30% of the UCs and strictly protecting at least 10% of the UC areas. 
and also in terms of rivers and inland waters uh, to we are aiming at to at least 25 kilometers of free flowing rivers to be restored. So you see there are very ambitious objectives with a very short time frame. The second objective is uh, preventing and eliminating pollution of our ocean seas and waters in line with our uh, EU action plan towards zero pollution. And here we also have specific targets of reducing by at least 50% plastic litter at sea, reducing at least 30% of microplastic and at least 50% of nutrient losses and the use and risk of chemical pesticides. And the third objective is making the blue economy carbon neutral and circular, and this is in line with the European climate law. Here we have two specific targets. Uh, first of all, net zero maritime emissions, so eliminating greenhouse gas emissions from maritime economic activities and uh, in the EU and sequester those emissions that cannot be avoided. And second target is developing a zero carbon and low impact aquaculture and promoting circular low carbon multipurpose use of marine uh, and water spaces. So these are the three objectives of our mission. Uh, our mission obviously um, provides major opportunities for reaching carbon neutrality, biodiversity restoration and economic prosperity. And uh, what I would like to still to mention uh, to finish my part of this presentation and then give a floor to Andrea is that in addition to the three specific objectives, uh, we see in the next slide that we have two cross-cutting enablers. So you remember the five legs of the starfish, here comes the two next ones are the cross-cutting enablers, which are very important also. And the first one is uh, promoting a digital ocean and water knowledge system. And the second one is public mobilization and engagement. So uh, keeping in mind those three ob specific objectives and two enablers, then uh, I will give the floor to Andrea, who will explain how are we going to implement this, and particularly with reference to the concept of the lighthouses, which are key uh, sites to implement our missions. Andrea, the floor is yours. Good morning from my side, everybody. My name is Andrea Strachinescu. I work in DG Mare. I'm head of unit responsible for maritime innovation, marine knowledge and investment. And of course, together with our colleagues from RTD and from all the other services of the Commission, we develop what we present you today, of course, with the contribution of various stakeholders and member states. And let's move on from where Elisabetta left it. So we have the mission specific objective. We have, of course, uh, the ambition to have this implemented and to be able to address the pollution, the restoration, but the decarbonization all across Europe. But being quite complex, we cannot start in all places with everything. So what we put in practice is the concept of mission lighthouses. And we start working in different river and sea basins with the broad, of course, engagement of various stakeholders and putting in practice the principle mentioned in the implementation plan. So we are going to work around the Danube River Basin, addressing, of course, uh, going up to the Black Sea, uh, of course, as well, Mediterranean, Atlantic and Arctic and Baltic and North Sea. So um, it's quite, I would say, complex and already it was mentioned. So think of the lighthouses as something which is area based, but not only because what we want to put in practice with the various community of stakeholders is to build a community, to build a hub, to build a system that will allow all the innovative solutions to be put in practice, but also to engage with various uh, stakeholders and citizens. And once more, and what is extremely important, we want to encourage the collaboration across sea basins and all regions to participate. More to be followed. Let's move to the next slide, please. We have different we have uh, different uh, ways of working. So first of all, of course, the starting point will be to show in different sea basins that the objectives are achievable. We cannot start with everything in the same time, as I said, and you will see in the work program, the topics are going to show you how we are addressing this in terms of objectives in different sea basin. So we are going to start building the lighthouses, but also to uh, demonstrate, to pilot the solutions, to show that they are viable, 
to be able further and uh, later on in the second phase to have the deployment and upscaling uh, phase. So quite important, it's this building uh, uh, of the uh, of the foundation phase, uh, which will be followed at the midterm review, extremely important as well. And then moving to another dimension, trying, of course, to attract uh, uh, more investment and working on um, uh, on uh, uh, the phase of, uh, of the, to the next slide, please. Thank you. So what we expect to have. So uh, again, we have the mission objectives and here we can see what it will be for the next period of time to be achieved in terms of different C basins, but working on different enablers. We are going for each of the lighthouse to build a platform uh, in which we are going to engage with stakeholders, but also with citizens. And in terms of objectives, protection or restoration are going to be addressed all across Europe through uh, the Blue Park Skull, but also Atlantic and Arctic Lighthouse for the restoration and coastal resilience, but also the Danube Lighthouse. We are going to uh, look at the actions in terms of uh, protection and restoration from the point of view of river basin. Uh, river basin. Now, pollution, Mediterranean, uh, as mentioned, uh, will be plastic, but also nutrient and chem chemicals. Um, carbon neutral and circular blue economy, Baltic and North Sea, again a platform, but also looking at the uh, zero carbon, multipurpose use of the marine space, but also aquaculture um, uh, to be to be looked at uh, for what is going to be put in practice. There are the two enablers, the digital twin um, of the ocean as one of the component of the water knowledge system, but also all the part on the citizen engagement that is going to be put in practice with the creation of the community, but also uh, support from various initiatives as the European Climate Solidarity Corps, but also ocean literacy, youth ambassadors, school projects, and moving uh, uh, some initiative at the European dimension as the plastic pirates. Everything, as uh, as, uh, um, uh, as mentioned, will be uh, as mentioned will benefit from uh, the a platform, a mission platform in terms of support and monitoring, but also from an investment community. So let's move to the next slide, please. Now here uh, we wanted to present the um, what are the enablers for the for the mission. Already mentioned, uh, we have the digital twin, but also we have the public engagement uh, in terms of in, uh, engaging different citizens. So you will see all of this. Um, the idea is that we are building on initiatives already happening. So. Um, we are not building from scratch, but we want to give value to all the ones already being outside and bring them to uh, the uh, another uh, another step in terms of providing value for the mission and also trying to build, as in the case of the digital twin, all, on all these uh, results to be able to to put in practice the infrastructure that we need. So. Digital twin, it's the marine knowledge. Without marine knowledge, we cannot do uh, uh, something sustainable at the level of the sea. So building on what was achieved, it's one wing, one key principle. And you will see this in the course as well. My colleagues are going to uh, explain you. So let's move to the next slide. So what program it will be presented in details? I'm not going to enter into this. You are going to hear from my colleagues which are the calls. The idea is that we concentrate on lighthouses. We concentrate in the main uh, uh, sea basin. We, ha we want to support the policy objectives of the European Green Deal, as already presented earlier, like the biodiversity strategy, zero pollution action plan, sustainable blue economy, and of course, based on all the reports uh, that uh, the ones that uh, the one that was uh, developed by the board, but also the implementation plan. So this is the, these calls are going to support the first phase, which is development and piloting for the period 2021 2025. Uh, Let's move to the next slide, please. So we are going to have three calls that are going to be presented to you in detail and one call supporting the digital, uh, the digital twin and the public engagement. So indicative budget 140 million, call deadline 12th of April 2022. 
extremely important. Think of the fact that we do not work only on sea basis. My colleagues are going to explain you. We want to encourage the collaboration across sea basin, and we want also to allow regions that are outside some, region, some uh, regions to engage in the call. We introduce the concept of associated regions. So there is a place for anybody to engage and to contribute to the objectives that we want to put in practice, of course, in terms of restoration, pollution, and decarbonization. I think that this was my last slide. So calls uh, that are going to be presented, protection and restoration of freshwater ecosystem and biodiversity, marine and freshwater, but also prevention and emission of pollution, sustainable carbon neutral and circular blue economy, and the call dealing with enabling uh, activities for the mission. There is one more. So question and answer. You have the possibility to use Slido. So you have here all details. Go to Slido, insert hashtag mission info day for joining the event, and then they select the room. Uh, try nevertheless in order to allow us to provide the value of the, the answer that you are looking for to relate to a specific topic, uh, to relate to, uh, to a specific call. So put numbers and then uh, address your question. So this was my last slide for sure. And now we are going to specific topics. So we enter in the work program 2021 and we are going to hear from our colleagues that are going to uh, present us um, the details of, uh, of the call. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea. And now I will continue to introduce our colleagues. So we are going to start with uh, innovation actions. And we are going to present them by call. And uh, as, you, as Andrea has mentioned, the calls follow the three objectives. So the first call is protect, restore, and marine and freshwater ecosystems and biodiversity. And we have three innovation actions that we would like to present to you. Elena and Roberta will introduce them. And it is the topic on European blue parks. Then the Danube River Basin Lighthouse, restoring of fresh and transitional water ecosystems. And then third, the Atlantic and Arctic Basin Lighthouse, restoration of marine and coastal ecosystems and increased climate resilience. So we will uh, introduce those three topics and then um, we will follow the other calls and then we will have the first uh, question and answers session. So Andrea, uh, Roberta and Elena, please. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Elisabetta. Good morning uh, to everybody also from, uh, from my side. So the first topic in the Mission Ocean Work Program 2021 is on the European Blue Parks. Um, the Blue Parks Initiative, as already said, uh, falls under the objective one of Mission Ocean. So the aim is uh, to protect and restore marine ecosystems uh, and biodiversity. Uh, the objective of, of the activities uh, uh, under this uh, topic uh, are to develop and demonstrate uh, innovative solutions uh, for the protection and conservation of European blue capital, but also for enhancing marine protected areas uh, in, uh, uh, in Europe. And this is in line uh, with uh, uh, the Marine uh, Strategy Framework Directive. So this topic will contribute and we can go to the next uh, slide, uh, to uh, several uh, uh, broad policy objectives, uh, those under the uh, European Biodiversity Strategy, those under the European Green, Green Deal, uh, those under the uh, European Sustainable Blue Economy Strategy and the European Climate Law. But activities under this topic will also contribute to the implementation of a number of directives uh, which are uh, addressing uh, blue capital and the conservation and preservation of, uh, of uh, our ocean. The Marine Strategy Framework Directive, the Marine Spatial Planning Directive and the Water Framework Directive. Activities under the Blue Park topic uh, are expected to deliver uh, a number of, uh, of, uh, of results. In particular, uh, we expect the, the activities to contribute to the achievements of the 30% target of EU marine protected areas and also 
uh, to the 10% uh, target of strictly protected areas. Activities are also expected to enhance integrity and resilience uh, of marine ecosystems, including coastal areas, and the creation of uh, uh, blue ecological corridors. We also expect activities to enhance a sustainable use of marine resources and to deliver sustainable ecosystems, uh, ecosystems uh, uh, services. And of course, uh, activities will also have to contribute to improve management of protected areas and intervene at the level of, of, of the governance. So the scope of the topic is uh, on the conservation and uh, preservation, protection and preservation of marine ecosystems, but also on the creation of, uh, uh, on the establishment uh, on, uh, of marine protected areas. The focus of, of, of the activities are expected to address four main uh, uh, areas. One uh, is uh, uh, focused on marine biodiversity hotspots and ecological corridors. Activities are also expected to show high potential to be scaled up and reproduced in other areas. Uh, we want uh, uh, also, uh, through this project, uh, uh, a clear contribution to the development and to the delivery of marine ecosystem services, uh, several of them, but also including services that can contribute to mitigation and adaptation to climate change. And also equally important, uh, it was mentioned as uh, a, 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 a key element in Mission Ocean, is the uh, engagement with uh, citizens, major stakeholders and local authorities in uh, uh, implementing uh, uh, the uh, measures and the solutions which are developed under this topic. This topic is implemented through uh, innovation actions. The budget allocated is 17 million and we expect a contribution per project of the order of 8.5 million. Another important aspect to be included in, 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 in the proposals and in the projects uh, that will be retained are networking and joint activities with other projects which have uh, been funded either under Horizon 2020, under Horizon Europe, under other European programs like LIFE. So you can uh, foresee and allocate a specific budget for networking and joint activities with other initiatives which are already ongoing. And these activities can take the form of workshops, exchanges of information and knowledge, exchanges of good practices, joint publication, and, and other activities. I think this was my last, yeah, uh, so over to Elena for the second topic. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Roberta. I will present uh, the next two topics. So the first one covers the Danube River Basin Lighthouse, restoration of freshwater and transition water ecosystems. Uh, the aim is to demonstrate on a large scale the implementation of Mission Objective 1 for freshwater and transitional water ecosystems with a view to uh, scale up and contribute to implementation of Mission Lighthouse in the Danube River Basin, which is aimed at the restoration and protection of freshwaters and uh, transitional waters and biodiversity. Next slide, please. Expected outcomes. Um, I think in the policy context, you can very well see here the links with the EU biodiversity strategy as well as with the EU climate law and overall with the European Green Deal. Um, in terms of expected outcomes, uh, we expect contribution to restoration of at least 25,000 kilometers of free flowing rivers, reduction of artificial river flow barriers and improved river ecosystem connectivity, as well as increased populations of uh, freshwater species, in particular emblematic species, increased protection of communities and ecosystems from extreme weather events, and increased local revenue from restored ecosystems, 
as well as support uh, the scaling up of ecosystems and biodiversity restoration in associated regions. To the associated regions uh, and uh, similar conditions, we will still come uh, later on. Next slide, please. In terms of the uh, scope of the topic, uh, we would like to stress here two, uh, two uh, elements. First, the proposals have to show or will have to show an effective and economically profitable way to freshwater ecosystem restoration and their sustainable use in the Danube River Basin. Again, stressing including tra transitional waters of the Danube River Delta, <clears throat> focusing on the reduction of the impact of artificial river flow barriers on wildlife movement, restoration and protection of biodiversity and uh, valuable ecosystems, particularly biodiversity hotspots, protection of inhabited areas against floods, measures to reduce impact of drought on freshwater ecosystems and biodiversity, and sustainable management of river sediments. Emphasis is put on nature-based solutions for freshwater ecosystem restoration and sustainable use. And uh, su successful projects uh, will at the same time have to demonstrate uh, and show a way to profitable and sustainable use of the restored freshwater ecosystems. Uh, the demonstration should combine active and passive restoration solutions, um, in particularly focusing on nature-based solutions. In terms of indicative budget, uh, the total budget for the topic is 17 million euros. The project contribution of eight and a half million euros. Uh, there are a number of elements that are important here. First, additional eligibility conditions apply. We will come to those later. The topic entails the possibility to give third party grants to associated regions. Emphasis is on scale up and impact drive, so the measures should be really impact driven. Emphasis is on nature based solutions and on support to local economy and social and economic transitions. Next slide, please. So the next uh, topic is the topic covering Atlantic and Arctic uh, Basin Lighthouse, restoration of marine and coastal ecosystems and increased climate resilience. The aim is to demonstrate on a large scale the implementation of Mission Objective 1 for marine and coastal ecosystems, again with a view to scale up. I would like to also emphasize that uh, this uh, Mission Lighthouse is a joint lighthouse with Mission Climate Adaptation, so it also contributes to uh, climate adaptation and mitigation. The topic should contribute to uh, implementation of Mission Lighthouse in the Atlantic and Arctic sea basins, aimed at restoration and protection of the coastal and marine ecosystems, biodiversity, as well as mitigation and adaptation to impacts of changing climate system. Next slide, please. So I think the policy context is uh, very uh, clear here again. We are within the Green Deal uh, context uh, with focus on EU biodiversity strategy. And we have also here contribution to EU climate law. Expected outcomes. Here we expect implementable blueprints for making communities climate proof and weather resilient technological, logistical, social and economic innovations for the restoration of marine, coastal and river ecosystems, as well as blueprints for implementing innovations through basin scale cooperation in the Atlantic and Arctic and contributing to the implementation of European Green Deal, EU adaptation strategy, EU biodiversity strategy and a number of uh, other strategies, as well as better informed citizens and decision makers and better governance. Next slide, please. In terms of scope of the topic, uh, the proposals are expected to focus on restoration of marine ecosystems at a large scale through reduction of pressures, for instance, from fishing, pollution, extraction, etc. Application of ecosystem based management, nature based and building with nature restoration measures that are boosting resilience to climate change 
and mitigating its impact, other locally adapted restoration measures. Proposals should focus on demonstration activities uh, for, through nature-based solutions that boost coastal resilience, for instance, oyster reefs, kelp forest, wetlands and salt marshes restorations. And uh, the proposals should explore different pressures uh, and climate adaptation in a systemic way. In terms of indicative budget, uh, the total budget per topic is 17 million euros. Per project contribution uh, is in the range of 8.5 million euros. Emphasis is on uh, scale up emphasis, uh, and impact drive nature-based solutions. The topic has possible GRC participation as well as uh, the topic includes support to local economies, social and economic transitions. And as I mentioned for the previous topic, additional eligibility conditions apply, as well as a possibility to give grants to third parties, associated regions, and we will come to these conditions at a later stage during these presentations. So this is all from my side and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Elena and Roberta. I would like to um, remind to all the speakers that we really need to stick to five minutes of the presentation. Now we are over time, so please, can you inspect the time? Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, everyone. Um, and I'm glad to be with you this morning to present the actions to prevent, minimize and remediate litter and plastic pollution, which will be contributing to the Mediterranean Sea Lighthouse. Proposals under this topic should demonstrate on the large scale the implementation of Mission Objective 2, which is the prevention and elimination of pollution in our ocean and waters. We're looking for solutions that can be scaled up and transferable. So as the mission progresses, we move from demonstration of solutions to their deployment across the Mediterranean Sea area and across the Union. And um, projects under this proposal will contribute to the lighthouse in the Mediterranean Sea, which uh, by, by developing concrete solutions to prevent and minimize plastic litter and microplastics. Next slide, please. The, this mission is a key contribution to the European Green Deal and objective two of this mission um, contributes directly to the relevant targets of the zero pollution action plans, um, which are applicable to the aquatic environment. As outlined already by Lisa Better, this is in for objective two, in particular, the two targets to reduce plastic litter at sea by 50% and reduce the inflow of microplastics into the environment by 30% until 2030. The projects um, should also contribute, of course, to important um, policies such as the Marine Strategy Framework Directive and Water Framework Directive. In terms of expected outcomes, we um, pro proposals should um, reduce pollution from litter, plastics and microplastics in the Mediterranean Sea Basin in line with the Zero Pollution Action Plan and the Convention for the Protection of the Mediterranean Sea Against Pollution. It should contribute to the um, Marine Strategy Framework Directive requirement to reduce beach litter to less than 20 items per 100 meters of coastlines. Um, we are looking for an accelerated uptake of solutions. We know there are a lot of good ideas and solutions out there, but a key issue is that they are actually taken up and applied by local authorities, businesses and other um, actors. So we're looking for proposals that accelerate this uptake um, of solutions. Um, proposals should also contribute to the effective monitoring of marine litter quantities in line with uh, EU methodologies, such as under the EU single use plastics directives. They should support the good environmental status um, and empower citizens to take action themselves um, against pollution. Next slide, please. So the scope of this uh, of proposals is um, the solution should be applicable to the Mediterranean Sea Basin, including its major river catchment areas. I think here um, this mission makes a specific it specifically links the fresh waters and marine waters and takes a connected approach from source to sink. We want activities to carry out demonstration activities in at least three different countries of the Mediterranean Sea. Um, and they should demonstrate um, and or identify locations where solutions can be replicable and draw up an action plan to replicate and scale up solutions. 
They should also um, demonstrate um, specifically scalable break, um, breakthrough innovations of all forms, so technological innovation, business, social and governance innovation to prevent and minimize uh, marine and freshwater pollution. They should follow the zero pollution hierarchy as outlined in the zero pollution action plans and may include such solutions as upstream litter prevention um, through uh, through design, the substitution of less polluting substances and materials, a more circular design of fishing gear, including improved repairability and durability, solutions for identifying, tracking and the recovery of uh, accidental container loss and of fishing gear, and the collection, sorting, recycling and reuse of waste. Note that we are covering other forms of pollution in later calls and in other parts of the program, but solutions under, under this topic should not increase other forms of pollution, including noise in the environment. The indicative budget is 16 million euros, so we're looking um, at budget contributions per project of around 8 million euros and expecting two projects under this call. There are some important eligibility conditions that will be applying. Some will be outlined later on, um, but the emphasis, as in the previous topic, is really on the scale up and the impact drive to support local economies in their transitions um, towards a more um, sustainable and less pollution-free environment. Importantly, the JRC projects under this proposal can also benefit from JRC participation. With that, um, I'd like to thank you and give the floor back to Elisabetta. Many thanks, John. And then we would like to pass to the last presentation of innovation actions in the third call, third objective on sustainable carbon neutral and circular economy, uh, which will be presented by Nikos Dampukas. Uh, Hello, uh, I'm going to present uh, the lighthouse in the Baltic and in the North Sea basins that is about a low impact marine aquaculture and multi-purpose use of marine space. And the aim of this uh, innovation action is to show the way to profitable and sustainable seafood farming away from the densely populated coasts of the Baltic Sea and of the North Sea and with a focus on low trophic level species farming, like algae, like mollusks, and a kind of farming that has no dependence on fossil fuels or minimal dependence, and uh, aquaculture farming that shares space with other offshore economic activities, such as wind farms, and this is in full accordance with the mission objective three as regards to low impact and sustainable marine uh, aquaculture and multi-purpose use of marine space. And with this topic, we implement the mission lighthouse uh, in the Baltic and the North Sea in order to make the blue economy more sustainable and uh, of course, carbon neutral. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the policy context of this uh, topic, as uh, all the mission topics, of course, the most important one is the European uh, Green Deal. And under the European Green Deal, the most important strategy for this topic is the farm to fork strategy for a fair, healthy and environmentally friendly food system. Very much related is the EU, EU bioeconomy strategy as well as the communication on a new approach for sustainable blue economy and also the new guidelines for sustainable and competitive EU uh, aquaculture. And of course, very much related is also the Marine Strategy Framework Directive that is the environmental pillar of the integrated maritime policy in EU and also the Maritime Special Planning Directive that tries to put some order uh, in different activities in marine space. So what do we expect from this topic, from projects that will be funded? They want, we want the project to show us uh, how to have an uh, optimal and carbon neutral use of marine space. And we also want uh, to know how to increase 
ε, ε, aquaculture production, sound aquaculture production in a sustainable and environmentally friendly manner. And we want to focus particularly on algae and animals uh, that are low trophic. Uh, we want uh, more safety of farm seafood uh, and we want to build consumer trust. We also need data and we need database systems for market-wide monitoring. So we want together with these activities to collect data that will support these activities and also reporting other different environmental uh, legislation. Uh, we want more renewable energy and of course less fuel, less fossil fuels along the aquaculture uh, value chain. And we want more knowledge to minimize the carbon footprint and environmental impact of aquaculture. And as with all topics of the blue of the blue domain in the blue economy, we want to advance professional skills and competencies of those who are already working and those who are being trained to work within the blue economy. And we don't only and not mainly mean researchers, uh, po doctoral and postdoctoral students, but we also and most mostly mean people who work in the real economy with uh, different kinds of skills. Next slide, please. So what is the scope of this topic? Uh, we want consortia that will apply to test and demonstrate novel aquaculture methods and techniques. And uh, together with aquaculture, we want consortia to give us options for creating artificial reefs uh, near or around uh, the wind uh, farm uh, uh, premises and aquaculture premises. Uh, as it's very well known that artificial reefs uh, can increase productivity of uh, fish fisheries in an area and can provide the shelter and nursery ground for fish and other biota. Uh, we also want uh, consortia to work on approaches for efficient and cost-effective monitoring of uh, both the inputs uh, and the outputs of the aquaculture activities, of the aquaculture industry. For example, as inputs, we consider the water quality, the nutrients, the suspended material, the water quality in terms of pollutants, as, a, as out, outputs, uh, all kinds of, emis of emissions, including the ones that uh, member states have to report to the UN and uh, under different uh, environmental legislation. And we want consortia to carry out demonstration activities in three different countries of the Baltic Sea and uh, in the North Sea. And uh, we want also consortia uh, to identify areas and locations where the solutions that I uh, propose are applicable and to draw up an action plan and roadmap to replicate and scale up the pollution solutions and actions. And for this topic, we foresee a total budget of 16 million euros. And uh, we consider that 8 million is an uh, indicative good uh, budget range for its topic. So we foresee probably two top two uh, grants under this topic. And it's very important that uh, proposals should include case studies both in the Baltic and the North Sea, and at least one case study should be on seaweeds, on seaweed farming, macroalgae farming, uh, near in conjunction with wind farm installations, and at least one other case, one case study should be about mollusk farming uh, in wind farms, and uh, this is an impact-driven topic and uh, for this we want uh, multi-stakeholder engagement in a co-creation uh, way and uh, we have an emphasis in scaling up and reaching the market and these are the main issues I would like to highlight about this topic, about the scope and the impact and there are additional eligibility conditions for this and the previous topics that they will be presenting in the next slide by other colleagues. So thank you very much for your attention.
Many thanks, uh, Nikos. And uh, so this concludes this first uh, session of presentation of topics. Then we are opening our question and answer session. Uh, you have already submitted questions on Slido. You can continue to submit them. And uh, you will see them now appearing on the screen. We'll try to take them all as much as possible. We have time until 5 to 11. Uh, I will start with the first question. Uh, could you please give a definition of, I don't see it fully, of a, of a lighthouses? And uh, sorry, I don't see it fully on my screen. Um, uh, and which elements would be included. Now, I, I, I will give a floor to my colleagues, but I, I would like to start by saying, uh, as I already mentioned in my presentation, it's very important also that you read the implementation plan because there you have all the official definitions. Uh, we can, of course, now briefly reply, but we cannot go too much into the details. Uh, and uh, so I would like to encourage you also to read these background documents, which are very important. Um, maybe, Elena, would, li would you like to give some elements or some example of, of lighthouses? I cannot hear you. I think you are muted. Could you unmute yourself, please? I am. Do you hear me now? Yes. Um, I would like to go back to the slide that Andrea presented about the mission lighthouses. And as Elizabeth mentions, you will find uh, many more details in the implementation plan that is publicly available. If we go back to that slide, uh, you will see that uh, there is a scheme that depicts the, mi the mission lighthouse. And that scheme, that little diamond, includes the elements of the lighthouse. There is research and innovation, which is part of this uh, work program and the topics that we are presenting and from which will come then projects that will contribute to this element of the lighthouse. There are other projects to implement the lighthouse objectives. There would be joint projects with other missions and partnerships. Obviously, the lighthouse would need financial resources and tools. It would need to involve business, local businesses, and we've mentioned this in some of the topics that we were presenting. And the lighthouse would also need the governance and involvement of citizens. What you also see in around the diamond is the uh, lighthouse implementation charters, which were mentioned already. Involvement of stakeholders in the lighthouse, involvement of member states and regions, linked with regional and smart specialization strategies and other plans at the le level of member states and regions, for instance, like, like recovery plans and as well with private investments, private programs, and so on. So it's hub. It's actually much more than hub. It brings together all these different elements that are needed in order to implement mission objectives in the specific four areas that we have mentioned here. Thank you. Many thanks, Elena. Uh, if we can see the next question, um, Okay, which would be uh, the main difference between these calls and the main cluster work program? Uh, something that should be considered into the proposal preparation. Um, I, I will also give a floor to my colleagues, but I would like to start by saying that, of course, a mission is different, has a very different scope, but there is a very close link with a main work program. So you will see also cross references to other topics which are very relevant to the mission in the manual program, but they have a different, indeed, different scope. So important interlinkages, but the specificity for the mission, you see that we also have a majority of innovation actions um, in order to deploy and uh, develop quickly, quick solution. But very important to keep links with the other part of the Horizon Europe program. Uh, I think Andrea would like to complement on this as well. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, so first of all, uh, we have uh, in the call for the mission Ocean, the concept of innovation actions. We are, so we are speaking about uh, integrated uh, pilot demonstration projects, um, building on previously successful demonstrated research and innovation action. Probably some links could be done from the first call of the clusters in probably 
later uh, mission calls providing that the calls from the clusters were successfully completed. So things think a little bit in terms of clusters, sometimes of pieces of a bigger system, which is later integrated in a mission. I think that links can be done uh, not on the spot, I would say, from a first year work program. Nevertheless, with the clusters, we are, build, we are building the basis of uh, uh, the more integrated projects uh, we want to have the, uh, to have demonstrated with, uh, with the mission. Uh, what is important, and I said at the beginning, think of, in, think of integrated, previously successfully demonstrated research innovation actions when you are going to submit your proposal uh, for a project on, on the mission. Thank you very much. And so I think so several next next question is several times the speaker mentioned EU across the union member states please confirm that the topics and lighthouses are fully open for associated countries. I think there were several questions on the participation and I would like to remind one main principle we are here applying the Horizon Europe rules. That means that all topics are open to all member states, associated countries and third countries participation. There are also rules for funding. So I think there were also other questions um, mentioning, asking whether, uh, for example, for a Mediterranean lighthouse, we can have participants from other uh, areas. Of course, uh, as I said, the rules of Horizon Europe apply. So in all topics, even if there is a focus uh, necessarily of uh, each lighthouse on some sea basins, but the participation is open to all member states, associated countries and third countries according to Horizon Europe rules. So this is a rule which applies to all topics. Then um, maybe my colleagues would like to complement on this. Uh, Roberta? Uh, well, or others? Just to confirm, uh, just to confirm uh, what Elizabeth said, participation is open and concerning uh, the association of, of, of third countries uh, to, uh, to Horizon Europe, uh, actually uh, we need to see where we stand country by country with the association agreement and the ratification of the association agreement. So the moment that the association agreement uh, to Horizon Europe is in force, of course, associated countries are considered as member states in terms of uh, rules for participating. Otherwise, uh, if uh, the uh, association agreement is not yet ratified and enforced, of course, uh, uh, rules for association uh, for associated countries uh, cannot apply. So it's in progress. Uh, the ratification, uh, there was a specific question on Albania. The ratification of the association agreement uh, with uh, Albania is at the very end of the, of the process. So we do expect uh, Albania to be considered as an associated country by the closing date of the calls. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Roberta. OK, uh, so uh, there were some questions as well linked to the participation in the consortium. Uh, there was a question uh, linked to the Med and it was a question linked to the Baltic. Um, Conditions are described in the call. So what we want and uh, to to have is at least three countries belonging to a certain basin being part and having the uh, solution successfully demonstrated. So now if you want to go beyond, nobody will prevent you. The, there are the basic conditions that are needed to be fulfilled. Of course, you have to consider as well which is the budget available and to be able to put this in practice. We said that we want to encourage the cross-Europe uh, uh, um, collaboration and for this the principle of associated regions was introduced. Associated regions, for sure, they can be outside the basin in which the demonstration is taking place, but you need always to, resp to respect to fulfill the minimum criteria. So in the case, because it was a question that was for the Mediterranean and also for the Baltic, think of this 
of course, see how you can reach a level, the level of ambition you want to put in practice. And uh, if you are able to engage beyond, uh, uh, beyond the, uh, the Baltic or beyond the Mediterranean, nobody will prevent you. But think at the level of ambition that has to be first demonstrated in the basin, which makes the object of the, the, the call. Thank you, uh, Andrea. Um, I see, yes, maybe the last question also was referring to the North uh, Sea and Baltic countries. I think we already replied to this that for each topic, we anyway, uh, the participation is open to uh, all member states, uh, associated countries, and also international partners from third countries. Uh, next question is the scaling up of the project proposal should be explained in detail to a concrete business plan. Uh, would one of my colleagues like to take these questions? Maybe Roberta. Sorry, I had some uh, connection issues. Um, can you repeat the question, Elisabetta? Uh, so the scaling up of a project proposal should be explained in detail through a concrete business plan. So is there a need for a business plan? Well, actually, uh, yes, a business plan or, uh, uh, you know, any uh, explanation that you can provide in terms of uh, uh, actions leading to uh, demonstrate, but also scaling up uh, the innovative solutions which are developed in the in the project uh, and also in relation to the associated regions we would like to uh, have uh, a sort of analysis a sort of uh, you know planning of how reproducibility can take place uh, in uh, the associated region and for these uh, just to repeat the concept uh, behind the associated regions uh, we foresee cascade grants so uh, participants in, uh, in, uh, in the different innovation actions will have to launch calls uh, to identify uh, associated regions uh, where solution can be, uh, can be uh, reproduced. Uh, and uh, uh, the activities behind the uh, reproducibility of, of the solution in associated regions will have to lead uh, to uh, planning uh, the process uh, uh, behind uh, the reproducibility. Uh, and that's it. Many thanks, Roberta. Then there is a question on, um, on whether is it correct that pilot farms case studies in only the Baltic would be ineligible. Uh, Nikos, would you like to reply? Yes, of course. Uh, it is very clear that uh, proposals should include case studies in promising sites both in the Baltic Sea and in the North Sea. So if a proposal has case studies only in the Baltic Sea, does not fully satisfy the requirement of the topic. So we, we expect, we want projects who have case studies in the Baltic Sea and in the North Sea. Yes. This is my reply. Thank you. Thank you. I will take maybe the last question, which is um, actually making a connection between the mission board and the implementation plan. Um, so question on asking whether some of the objectives which were mentioned, like overfishing in the, in the um, starfish report, uh, where do we find them? Maybe Elena, would you like to reply to this, Elena or John? I can reply, Elisabetta. So, uh, as we have uh, mentioned at the beginning in the introduction, the mission implements the implementation plan. Mission, the implementation plan is not the Starfish report. The Starfish report was at the basis and as an inspiration to the mission implementation plan. Also, this work program covers only one year. In the subsequent years, there will be further work programs which will cover other topics. So obviously you appreciate that in this uh, work program, we cannot cover all the topics that are mentioned in the implementation plan. Elisabetta, back to you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Elena. And with this question, we have to close this session. Uh, of course, the questions can still be asked uh, online through our query uh, system. And uh, we will have now a break of five minutes before we enter into the next session. So we see you at 11 for the next session. Thank you very much to everybody.
Good morning and welcome back to everybody. Uh, we would like now to start the next session where we will present to you the coordination and support actions for each of the objectives and each of the lighthouses. So we will start with the first call, first objective, protecting and restoring marine and freshwater ecosystems and biodiversity. So we have a CSA for the Danube River Basin Lighthouse and for the Atlantic and Arctic Basin Lighthouse. So Elena and Roberta, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Elisabetta. Um, we will um, actually cover all the lighthouses uh, at the same time because as you have certainly noted when you were reading the uh, calls, uh, the uh, activities that we're proposing here are very similar. So in order to give you more time for questions, we will cover everything in a single presentation and we will not distinguish per lighthouse the specifics per each lighthouse you can easily read in the text of each of the uh, topics. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of the uh, aim of these coordination and support actions for mission lighthouses, they aim to support the rollout and operation of the mission lighthouses in the different sea and river basin. As mentioned previously, there are four uh, coordination, separate coordination and support actions specific to each lighthouse. Um, they are aimed to support basin scale governance and coordination, but also dissemination of information about the mission and outreach at the level of each basin and at the basin scale. Next slide, please. In terms of the policy context, here you see that uh, these activities actually contribute to all the different uh, policy, main policy initiatives that we have here. In terms of expected outcomes, we expect a structuring effect of those coordination actions that would consolidate and engage a wide community of different stakeholders across the sea basin or river basin and be able to ensure effective governance for the achievement of mission objectives. Uh, help to put up an effective governance structure, ensuring coherence and alignment of policies, initiatives and different actions at national local, regional and basin level. Um, we expect well-coordinated activities uh, underpinned by consistent monitoring framework to assess and the implementation achievement of mission objectives at the basin scale and provision also of technical services, uh, support services and um, um, further also increased awareness about the mission and about involvement of citizens in its implementation at the basin scale. Next slide, please. In terms of the scope of these activities, uh, first, um, we expect provision of support to implementation of the mission lighthouses in the different areas. These areas include governance and networking support. Um, they are specifically a contribution to the implementation of mission lighthouse charters set up and support uh, an effective uh, participatory governance structures for the uh, different uh, basins that would involve key players at the basin level. Then uh, networking opportunities and exchanges of good practices at the basin scale, not only within the mission, but with other missions and eventually with the relevant Horizon Europe partnerships and also liaise and network with other mission lighthouses to ensure exchanges of good practices and sharing of innovative solutions and for inspiration uh, between the different areas. Second area of activities is that of communication, monitoring and contribution to overall mission implementation. They are specifically design and carry out a basin scale communication actions to promote the mission provide relevant information and data to the mission implementation platform that will be that will be set up in the uh, in the coming uh, year as well as carry out quantitative and qualitative analysis and studies in relation to the mission and the different uh, activities uh, implemented at basin level lies with the mission implementation platform as well as with the mission secretariat in the European Commission. Third area of activities is uh, develop and foster innovation ecosystem. 
This entails, in particular, identification of RNI needs at basin scale, liaising with the ocean and water knowledge system. You see on in this respect uh, so topics in this work program will come uh, later in this presentation. Organize demonstration and testing activities for innovative solutions, support access to finance and mobilize investors, support cooperation of lighthouse projects with associated regions that was already mentioned previously. And uh, the fourth area is support mission implementation with technical expertise and know-how. Here, for instance, develop a coherent catalog of services, providing on-site or remote technical expertise, know-how for testing, validating, scaling up uh, of innovative solutions. Proposals should also include an outreach plan to actively advertise uh, the activities of the coordination and support action and services to citizens, local communities, as well as stakeholders in particular here, relevant industries and small and medium sized undertakings. And um, in terms of the uh, indicative budget for each CSA, and here the budget is please per CSA, uh, the budget is 3 million per CSA, per project contribution is 3 million as well. So this is one grant per CSA. Important here uh, is to stress that the uh, projects will have to bring about and build links with the Lighthouse uh, Innovation Actions and with the Mission Implementation Platform. This is very important and this is one of the important roles of the CSAs for the future. The outreach plan and communication aspect shouldn't be underestimated and it's really an important element of the work of the CSA as well as the monitoring and technical support. And that is all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elena. Then uh, I think we can open the floor for uh, the questions and answers. And the first question is, uh, why is collaboration with European Blue Parks envisaged for all lighthouses uh, innovation actions, but not for the Baltic and North Sea Lighthouse? Elena, would you have a reply for this? There is no specific reason for that. We just thought that for the other uh, topics, it was much more relevant, given that those topics are linked uh, to objective one. And equally is uh, also uh, the uh, topic of the blue parks, objective one of the mission. So by all means, please build this collaboration with the blue parks as well for the Baltic and North Sea Lighthouse uh, in areas where it is pertinent and where you see that it is pertinent. Indeed, thank you very much, Elena. Uh, the next question is, what are the expected links with a CSA, which was indeed already published in the previous call, uh, currently under a selection, uh, so which is a CSA um, for overall support also for, uh, for the establishment of the lighthouses. Um, and what is the link? The lighthouse CSA uh, require new partners, so can we, can we specify? Um, Elena, would you like to comment on the links with the first CSA, which indeed was published in a time which was prior even to the, you know, to the publication of the implementation plan. So there is necessarily the importance of a link and taking into account the respective different roles, the CSAs that we are calling now in the present call are very specific for the lighthouses as they have been developed. And the previous one was a more general support um, which needs to be provided. Uh, so, Elena, would you like to further comment on this? Mm, yes, please. So, the you see that um, that topic uh, was to build uh, some basic elements for the deployment of the future mission lighthouses. Among them, for instance, testing certain concepts uh, such as citizen assemblies and so on. So the new CSAs are supposed to build on the experience of uh, this CSA, create links with it and collaborate with it so that the knowledge and the concepts that would have been in the meantime created within that project would be seamlessly passed on 
to the new coordination actions at basin scale and basin level. So indeed, we expect close collaboration. Don't forget that the mission projects are managed as a portfolio, which requires very close collaboration between all the different projects. That's why I've also stressed the collaboration with the innovation actions and that uh, all the projects need to need to seamlessly exchange between them. That is also part of the mission approach for the future. Thank you, Elena. And the next question is um, referring to the area. So lighthouses are for defined areas, let's say for defined objectives, but allow for participation between actors from different areas. Uh, and I would say certainly yes. There are topics that could be of interest across lighthouses. So the idea of the CSAs is that the consortium has some partners in common to the lighthouses. We could be, this could be of help or would it be necessary? And this is rather specific. Elena, would you like to comment on this? Um, certainly this could be of help. However, it's not prescribed in the topics as a condition, so it would also the situation depends on each of the lighthouse and the type of partners that would be initially involved. So I uh, would leave you the liberty to uh, work and create uh, proposals uh, that would uh, that would uh, lead to effective uh, actions at the level of each lighthouse. Um, I would also stress that it is important to involve all the different actors, so to be broad so that we have uh, really effective implementation across the lighthouse areas and uh, that we also are in line with the principle of leaving no one behind, which is one of the principles of our implementation plan. So certainly something like that could be helpful, but it's not a must. Thank you, Elena. Uh, the next question is on how these calls would link to other calls from other EU missions. I think this is very strategic questions, the interlinkages uh, among different missions are important, they are very important. Um, four of the five missions clearly contribute to the Green Deal, so uh, there is a clear link between the ocean and the climate, also the ocean and the soil. Now, there is no obligation, but it will be important if there can be interlinks built with other missions. In future calls, we might even foresee that there are topics jointly developed. Uh, but it's, it's indeed an important aspect, even though it's not obligatory in the, in the course as they are presented now. And the next question, I think it's also very, very interesting. How do, um, how can the partnership programs support the missions projects? Uh, also very important, the interlinkages with a partnership, the different partnership uh, in uh, foreseen in our, uh, in our work program. For example, but this is still a call uh, which is open. There will be a call for a partnership, a public-public partnership on sustainable blue economy. And clearly the calls that will be developed there together with national programs um, and according to the objectives of that specific partnerships are very relevant to this mission. So interlinkages will be uh, very important, certainly. Maybe if my colleagues would like to further comment on this, or Andrea, please feel free to take the floor. I think we had uh, quite uh, an important number of questions which shows the interest, uh, but in the same time, in order to uh, be able to present you uh, everything. Uh, what is probably also to be mentioned, uh, we take note of all the questions and uh, we are going to elaborate um, a dedicated frequently asked questions in which all the ones, including the, the, the ones that we did not have the opportunity to, to answer now, are going to be included. So please uh, keep continue addressing uh, your questions. It's extremely important um, to, uh, to see how uh, you uh, see the topics, but in the same time, what are the elements that still need to be uh, to be better explained and uh, will develop based on this, as I said, quite soon, something that can be of use for uh, all the ones. Um, there is a question um, um, I saw that uh, is the Mediterranean 
uh, be considered only for plastic pollution and blue parks, possible to submit a project about low impact and Mediterranean instead of Baltic. We wanted um, to, to start in a way that will allow us to build a, a mass of projects addressing a specific topic in a different, uh, in, in a certain sea basin. We are going to uh, uh, to move this, but we need uh, first to, to build a critical mass. As I said, the most important is that Mediterranean to be addressed. If you want to include Baltic with Mediterranean, at the end of the day, nobody is going to block you. But think that you need to be ambitious first in the Mediterranean. And the principle, as I said, of associated regions nevertheless allows to uh, um, uh, to include uh, to include various uh, regions. So um, I think that uh, maybe uh, I don't know uh, if Elena, do you want to take some? Because I'm I'm seeing that the questions are still uh, coming, coming, coming. So um, maybe uh, take uh, uh, if we take one of them or uh, we consider I'm to. Happy, yes. I'm happy to okay. comment, Andrea, on the two previous ones because okay, I would like to stress one additional element with respect to the CSAs, namely that they are not um, area specific in the sense of, for instance, only aquaculture or only plastic pollution. They are supposed to cover the mission objective that is implemented at the basin scale. That means also things into the future, things that would be coming in the next work programs. So they need to be broad enough. They should not just focus on one specific uh, part of blue economy, for instance, here. They need to be able to help the implementation of the mission objective in that specific way. And there, what will help you with the preparation of the proposals is certainly reading of the implementation plan because that places the CSAs within a context. And that is very important, particularly for the CSAs here. So in terms of the links with other missions still, as uh, I have explained in the previous presentation, uh, the mission lighthouses actually foresee links with uh, projects with other missions that would be pre implemented in the area of the lighthouse. So over time, it is really important to build these links and the role of the CSAs will be also that. Also, uh, the CSAs will not be alone. Uh, this was also mentioned already. Um, the uh, work program also contains the mission implementation platform which would be helping the CSAs and uh, creating links with the CSAs and also with the mission secretariat and would have a number of dedicated roles. You can find uh, more information about this in the other action of the work program. It is explained there what the mission implementation platform would be doing and it is also explained in the implementation plan. So that gives you also the context into which the CSAs are coming in. It was one more question, and I don't know if you want to take it, uh, linked to uh, how Danube will link to the Black Sea, uh, to different communities. Uh, we are speaking about two ongoing CSA. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Elena, feel free to, 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 to come in, but before, um, first of all, if we are speaking about the Danube, the River Sea Basin and the Innovation Action, so there is a, this is a, a, a pilot a demonstration project. We are speaking about something else. Then, uh, if we are speaking about ongoing projects, of course, that what we want to build in, in terms of, of platform has to build uh, and to collaborate with the existing ones. It doesn't have to duplicate what the existing ones are doing, uh, but to create links, of course, it's something valuable. It's coming from, uh, from these ones. So, uh, Elena, you would like to add uh, something on this, please? I'm, I'm happy to add in terms of, in terms of the scope, uh, the river Black Sea is a continuum, so we cannot easily dissect one from the other. That's why the innovation action is covering also the transitional waters of the Delta and, and the surrounding area and the mission obviously covers also uh, that part, which is already part of the Black Sea. Um, this is uh, quite an important aspect also for, for the projects for the future because we're looking at the water system as a continuum here. 
So uh, indeed, in terms of the CSAs, now if we go to the CSAs, it is important to capture this continuum in the CSAs in terms of stakeholders, links, previous structures, linking into the things that exist already, projects that exist already, and structures that exist already. OK. So uh, I think we have, I hope we have replied to most of the questions. Um, I see one more coming. Do you see possibilities for cooperation with the UN decade of ocean science? Of course, all majority of, if not all, uh, the topics of our mission also contribute to the UN decade of ocean science. So there is certainly an important rele relevance in this respect. Um, okay, then I, again, I think, Several questions also referring to actually interlinks between different sea bays in Mediterranean and the Black Sea. And uh, I, I, I would repeat, like it has been already mentioned, that uh, interconnections, even though there is a focus for each lighthouse on, on one of the objectives to start, but interconnections among different basins are very important. And also the interrelations between the different objectives are, are evident. So, uh, yeah. It is very important also to keep this dimension of interconnections uh, in, the, in the project. Um, good. So uh, I would think that, well, we still have, uh, actually, we still have a few minutes' time. Um, checking the question. Uh, There is one question, Elisabetta, which uh, probably deserves an answer. Some of the topics seem quite close to the one in cluster. Is there any possibility of overlapping uh, uh, among cones or they are complementary? Uh, I could ensure you that they are uh, uh, thoroughly uh, checked for not overlapping. So uh, there is no overlap. Complementarity can exist, but no overlapping. Or we can have in the cluster, as I said previously, building the condition through the research innovation action of the future ones that can be successfully integrated in the future innovation actions that are going to come to the mission. So overlapping, it's not really something that uh, uh, is going to to uh, to happen. Um, Maybe if we have, if we can have uh, a few minutes, uh, it will be good if uh, maybe Elena, you can present briefly the eligibility criteria for the innovation actions. Yes, Andrea, thank you. So uh, if we can go back in the slides to the slides on the eligibility uh, criteria, please. So that uh, we also cover like this some of your questions because there's certainly questions concerning these uh, these additional conditions as well as the functioning. Yes, please, previous. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. So as we have mentioned with respect to mission innovation actions, um, additional eligibility conditions apply here. Uh, first, uh, the uh, proposals must carry out demonstration activities in three different countries of the specific basin involving including in the consortium partners from these three countries. This is also reflected then in the eligibility condition. And the proposals must also identify areas and locations where the solutions would be replicable and draw up an action plan and a roadmap to replicate and scale up the solutions and actions. The specific additional eligibility condition is that the consortium must include partners from those three countries. In addition, uh, there uh, there's a possibility of giving uh, third parties so financial support uh, in the form of grants to um, associated regions. Now, uh, the idea here uh, behind the associated regions is to um, address the impact driven approach of the mission. So to really make sure that the mission has an impact on the ground and that we preparing already actions for future scale up of the solutions that would be demonstrated and tested within the innovation actions. So each of the uh, proposals is expected to work with and engage with at least five associated regions to showcase the feasibility, replicability and scale up of these solutions and is also expected to provide technical assistance to build capacity and implement the solutions 
in the territory of those regions. Um, the technical assistance would entail, for instance, preparation of roadmaps, plans and projects to implement those solutions. Now, for this purpose, these third parties, the associated regions, may as beneficiaries receive grants up to 100,000 euros per associated region to showcase the feasibility and replicability of the solutions developed uh, in the projects. Uh, the grant may be received only once. Uh, next slide, please. Associated regions are understood as areas with ecosystems that can benefit from the demonstration activities. For instance, neighboring regions and or regions in different sea basin or less developed regions which need a boost to capacity building and so on. The proposals should ensure that the associated regions are located in the member states and associated countries other than those that are part of the project consortium. And that is important so that we achieve uh, already a scale up and that we go uh, in other areas and develop the solutions also in other areas. Next slide, please. There are additional conditions uh, that uh, apply in those uh, for those um, topics uh, to which we would like to draw your attention. These are not eligibility conditions. These are simply other conditions within the scope of those topics. First, it is really important that each uh, project and uh, proposals also uh, build links with other mission activities and actions. This is needed to maximize synergies within the lighthouse. And over time, there will be more projects coming within the lighthouse. So to systematically build these links with the other activities and to exchange, build links with the mission implementation monitoring system and with the implementation support platform within as well as with the CSAs that we have just presented. And also build links and contribute to the ocean and water knowledge system to which we will come still later. Next slide, please. Another really important element in a number of these actions is supporting local economy and social economic transitions. So the uh, actions should, uh, the projects should integrate actions to support these social and economic transitions and to ensure uh, involvement of uh, businesses, local business communities, particularly SMEs, but also investors and other business stakeholders in these transitions. Next slide, please. Another important aspect of uh, the uh, mission project is citizen engagement. And citizen engagement is an important element of the mission overall. So the topics include, for instance, training and communication activities towards stakeholders, citizen science opportunities, links with local actors, for instance, also European Solidarity Volunteer Corps, mission citizen assemblies, involvement of citizens in the activities, as well as multi-stakeholder approaches. This is specific, for instance, to the Baltic North Sea innovation in action. So this is in summary, the additional conditions and additional eligibility conditions that apply for the innovation actions uh, under the mission lighthouses. Thank you for your attention. Many, many thanks, Elena. And I hope this replies also to several questions which came in also for uh, definition of the associated regions. I see there were also some questions on uh, participation on non-EU countries, so we define as third countries all the countries which are non-EU member states or non-associated to our program. And the answer, so you're asking where for application is possible to apply without getting partners from the EU or researchers from outside EU countries, can they apply for this call? They can, but not alone. So there is, please refer to the conditions of Horizon Europe. This is not specific for the mission, it's Horizon Europe um, participation rules. So third countries or so most countries in the world are eligible for participation in addition to the minimum uh, consortium, which includes member states uh, and uh, or associated countries. And many of them are also eligible for funding, but uh, I would like to ask you to refer to the rules. So the, the answer is uh, yes, they can participate, they are welcome to participate, but not alone, not without uh, the minimum consortium uh, with member states and or associated countries. Um, I can maybe, Elisabeth, because I see some questions are related to the associated regions. So um, 
we defined that the in for the innovation actions um, we need to have involved at least three countries from the basin uh, then we are mentioning at least five associated regions if you are coming with a region that is in the same country that is the main one so you are adding one you are making your life easier but it doesn't show a little bit too much going beyond the region which is already involved in the project so try it and the idea is of course let's take the example of mediterranean we are addressing the pollution we have three countries around that are involved in the project but regions can be from other areas because pollution it's a common challenge not only for mediterranean but for all the other other basin as all the as all the challenges that we want to address restoration and also the carbonization so the idea will be to go beyond the mediterranean and to involve at least five regions that have similar uh, uh, challenges the idea is that they will be part of the project as elena previously mentioned and they will have the possibility at the end of the project based, based on the capacity that they build based on all the learning that they did to have a plan based on which similar projects can be later implemented in the regions which in the current projects they are so-called associated regions so uh, the idea is uh, of course to allow as many as possible region across europe to get engaged the idea is not to build the community in the same countries that are uh, involved but to across the learning and to across the collaboration um, uh, across Europe and all the countries uh, involved. Uh, can be associated regions be in three member states of the associated countries? As previously said, you are making your life easier. It's not the, 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 the idea that we want to put in practice, but we want to uh, engage the collaboration across, uh, across Europe. So it's not probably the most ambitious project if you are coming with the regions in the same countries that are in the project. Uh, does it mean that organization working specifically versus associated regions should not be partner only third party? Um, I'm not certain I got exactly the question here. Um, organization working specifically versus associated regions should not be partner on. Yes, uh, uh, I think uh, um, I think so. Um, Atlantic and Arctic Basin include only North Coast or the whole European Atlantic Coast. Um, it's the whole European Atlantic Coast, but as I said, uh, look carefully how this is defined um, and uh, try, uh, uh, of course, to see uh, if are not uh, overlaps. What we are going to do with the frequently asked question is to include the list of all the countries that are belonging to all the sea basins. I think that it's needed in order to facilitate the development of projects. This is going to come soon uh, uh, as well. So um, maybe one more question that I see that we can reply is a region able to receive financial support from more than one project in different topics. This, by the way, not only to the regions, but to all the participants, yes. Uh, one uh, legal entity can is can, could receive financial support in uh, in different projects, so there is no no restriction on that as long as they are part of a winning consortium. Um, which type of local regional authorities can be eligible? Maybe my if my colleagues would like to reply on that. But uh, uh, again, here I would really advise and recommend to refer specifically to the participation rules of Horizon Europe because its legal entities are eligible. So, um, okay. This there is also another question, yeah, Isabella. If it's possible to combine two lighthouse projects and create one large at 16 million. Uh, we want to engage as many as possible regions not to concentrate the financing in some regions so think of this as well uh, the idea is to include the diversity of all the regions in europe and to allow uh, all of them uh, to be involved in projects uh, and to create a change that is needed for a better future in all of this so um, no, uh, one lighthouse of 60 million will not be something that we are aiming. It was clearly mentioned and it's written in the work program. We are aiming to have two projects with an estimated budget of eight or eight or eight point five each. 
Yes, indeed. Uh, and interconnections are always welcome, but uh, the projects must have their own identity, according to the call. Um, when aware, will the public procurement action action and its requirements for niche and ocean seas and water implementation support, support platform be published? Um, I think this is part of the other actions. We, we did not present the other actions, but uh, maybe my colleagues would like to complement on that. Um, maybe Elena. I can complement on that, no problem. Thanks. So this is a public procurement action, so it's not published as a call and it's not part of these calls that are published. As you know, public procurement actions take their own, uh, follow their own procedures on public procurement and given the scale and size, uh, this will be an open call for tender, which will be coming up later this year. Uh, and uh, it will be published and uh, sufficient publicity will be made for it. So whoever is interested in participating in this uh, call for tender will, will have an opportunity to do that. And uh, it will be, the procedure will be managed uh, by, by CIMEA. So at this point, I cannot provide you with further information such as dates, but uh, you can appreciate that uh, we are eager to have the, uh, the mission implementation support platform soon. There is also a question about roughly when can we expect the next mission work program? It will come soon. So probably in May, the 2022 is going to be there. Uh, there will be more projects under the lighthouses, of course. As mentioned at the beginning, we want in the first years to support to build the critical mass that can later be used for dissemination and further uh, replication in Europe. So, of course, it will uh, continue on the main uh, elements and building on the implementation plan. And as I said, being able to engage as many as possible regions in, uh, in Europe. Good. I think we are getting close to the end of our session. There is a lot of lot of interest. We'd like still to can still take maybe one one question. Uh, maybe I would like to specify that in the question asking for will there be more lighthouses? But for the moment, again, referring to if you refer to the implementation plan, you see that we are referring to those lighthouses. Uh, but more projects within the indicated lighthouses, uh, certainly, and also more interconnection and expansion. Um, how GRC is supposed to take part in the proposal and or the project? I think this is a very interesting question, probably the last one that we will take. Uh, so the GRC is participating in the topics where their participation is mentioned after the, the selection of a proposal. So they will join the consortium, the winning consortium, after uh, that the evaluation and the selection took place. So indeed, it's important in, in many topics, uh, this participation is mentioned, but as I said, it's ex post. So a difference with what was ap uh, happening in previous programs where the GRC was participating in the calls for proposals as, as, as a full beneficiary now, the GRC will participate ex post in the consortia which are selected where it is relevant. And so we will facilitate this with a winning consortium. And uh, with this information, there is just one minute left, yeah. unless anyone of my colleagues would like to add some comments, I would like to thank you. We are going to have again a short break of five minutes and then we will open the final uh, uh, session of topics presentation on the enablers. So we have now a break until um, 11.45 and then we will start again the last session on topics and question and answers and then the conclusions. Thank you very much and see you in five minutes. Have a good coffee.
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome back to uh, the last part of the info day for the Mission Ocean. We are going to guide you now through the mission enabling activities. As pre presented at the beginning, uh, of course, that we need appropriate marine knowledge and the infrastructure in order to achieve it, but we need also to engage the young people and the citizens in the mission. So the first one presenting is my colleague Zoe Constantinou for the European Digital Twin Ocean. So Zoe, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Andrea. I will present the call for the underlying models for the European Digital Twin. The objective of this call is to prepare the next generation of EU digital ocean models complementary to the Copernicus Marine Service uh, in the framework of the European Digital Twin Ocean. This model should be integrated in the, into the architecture of the European Digital Twin Ocean, which will be a public infrastructure developed through a linked action to ensure access to required input and validation data from Emotnet, from Eurogus and other sources, and to high performance and distributed cloud computing facilities. The underlying models of the DTO will support the development of the mission lighthouses, reflect their complexity and challenges, and they will be aligned with the development of Destination Earth under the Digital Europe program. Next slide, please. I would like to present a little bit on the EU uh, Digital Twin Ocean vision. As you can see from the policy context, this topic is going to contribute in uh, all the priorities of uh, uh, the European Green Deal. And the vision behind the Digital Twin Ocean, the European Digital in, uh, Twin Ocean, is to make ocean knowledge readily available to all stakeholders, including citizens, entrepreneurs, scientists, and policymakers. The purpose is to provide an innovative set of user-driven and interactive tools in the framework of the digital transition, and to empower all to closely share the responsibility related to marine and coastal habitats, and to take action on the restoration, to also support a sustainable and innovative blue economy, and to mitigate it and, and adapt to climate change. Next slide please. slide, please. The successful project's results are expected to contribute to a variety of the following, to all of the following outcomes that are uh, multiple. First of all, uh, they should contribute to a suite of models, including at least a high resolution global ocean circulation model and coastal models at the land sea interface, ready for configuration and simulation. They should contribute to interoperable standards and application programming interfaces so that the twin models can be interfaced with Copernicus models or other external models and run in conjunction. They should also contribute to enhanced on-demand ocean forecasting and ocean climate prediction capacities, as well as in scientific toolboxes to be used in a collaborative virtual environment. They should improve the capability to support EU legislation on the marine environment and improve the capacity to support the three priorities of the mission on biodiversity, zero pollution and zero carbon, as well as support the work in the lighthouses. They should contribute to a sustainable and integrated set of models and services that will contribute to and benefit from development in the Digital Europe program, contributing to the Destination Earth priorities. Last but not least, they should have significant contribution to the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. The output of the project should rely on state-of-the-art science in ocean modeling and digital tools and should uh, also rely on the existing assets at EU level that are multiple and use EU and international data management standards. Next slide, please. The project should address all activities and tasks as described in the call for proposal, which the interested applicants should study thoroughly. More specifically, this, uh, this task should include the reference model suit, the Ocean Twin, for the European Digital Twin Ocean that should include the preparation and development of model and data assimilation schemes, based on, but not limited to, a global high-resolution kilometric ocean physics model from the IMERS project, 
complementing the Copernicus forecasting capacities and support on demand simulation services. Additionally, it should support a suitable configurable coastal model to reach the local scale as part of the Twin Ocean Suit or the Toolkit in line with state-of-the-art science. These models should be able to be used coupled with biogeochemistry, marine ecosystem models, and other integrated models of the marine environment, which would include marine activity, activities, human activities. It should be based on state-of-the-art science, be innovative, and targeted to support policy. The ocean suite should, suite should be completed with a toolkit that will include additional models or software following specified quality standards. It should include a scientific software library with open and free, easy to use software, models, artificial intelligence algorithms, all addressing different aspects of the marine socio-ecological system that can be enriched progressively. A virtual development environment where for validation uh, that is going to be used for validation purposes and scenario assessments and tools to retrieve data and products in suitable form for producing indicators for EU reporting. Finally, the Ocean Twin Model Suit should enable the development of what if scenarios and simulations to support the mission ocean lighthouses. It should aim to demonstrate what if scenarios in line with the mission priorities, representing the complexity of the lighthouses. Last but not least, we should mention that the total indicated budget of the topic is 7 million euros. If the project use satellite based Earth observations, uh, they should make use of Copernicus and uh, Galileo uh, assets. The Joint Research Centre may participate as a member of the consortium and the projects can benefit from the experience of JRC in areas of marine ecosystem modelling at European scale. The, the successful proposals should, should favour access to public-oriented models and algorithms, algorithms free of licensing restrictions. And I cannot underline this more. The project should develop in cooperation and complementarity with all the linked actions, as mentioned in the call, and in particular with the action EU public infrastructure for the European Digital Twin, included, other, uh, uh, included under other actions. Thank you. That is all from me. Thank you very much, Zoe. Uh, and now we go to the next part. So looking at the relation of the young generation with the sea and water, a uh, topic which is going to be presented by, uh, by Elena. Uh, by me, Andrea. Uh, Sorry. No Sorry. problem, no problem. Uh, yes, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, a forward-looking study. So the topic uh, calls for uh, a foresight study. Uh, and the idea behind this uh, is to uh, better understand the relation of young generation with the sea and waters. Uh, we expect uh, this analysis to also contribute to shaping uh, transformative marine and maritime policies uh, to provide insights for future initiatives uh, and also uh, to improve uh, our uh, capability to address the expectation of, uh, of next generations. So in terms of outcomes, uh, uh, we really expect to have a new evidence uh, uh, feeding uh, future policies, uh, strategies and initiatives, not only at European level, but also to be used at national or local level. And of course, uh, uh, this is the year of use, so we also expect uh, this topic to contribute uh, to the uh, 2022 year of use and to the UN decade of uh, ocean science. So the foresight study will have to focus on uh, two major uh, aspects. One, to carry out an analysis uh, of the emerging socioeconomic cultural and emotional values, needs and expectation of, of the young generations. And also uh, to provide uh, a, an assessment of the implication of these aspects for uh, future policies and strategies and initiatives. 
we expect uh, uh, the activities uh, uh, to have a broad geographical coverage uh, to address uh, gender issues, but also to take into account differences at the socioeconomic level, possible inequalities between uh, between uh, uh, different uh, uh, young groups. It's implemented via RIA, so this will be a study. Uh, the indicative budget we have allocated to this topic is 1 million, and actually we expect uh, uh, only one project to be retained for uh, 1 million uh, EU contribution. And I think this is it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Roberta. Now it's Elena. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andrea and Roberta. So I have the pleasure to present you the last topic that we will be presenting today. And that is the topic of piloting citizen science in marine and freshwater domains. The aim of which is to contribute to the implementation of Mission Enabler 2, public mobilization and engagement. And in particular, promotion and scale up of citizen science actions in this, these two domains with the involvement of young people. It's a coordination and support action. Next slide, please. Um, so in terms of policy contacts, you can see that this um, action may contribute to a number of policy initiatives that we have ongoing, not only the EU biodiversity strategy, but also the EU uh, zero pollution plan, and as well as EU climate law and uh, EU sustainable blue economy strategy. Uh, in terms of expected outcomes, we expect that the project results will uh, contribute to all the outcomes uh, that uh, are listed there. In particular, upscaling and continued excellent citizen science initiatives, particularly targeting young people in all EU member states and associated countries increased citizen awareness about the challenges faced by the ocean and waters. Here you see also the links with the previous topic. Mobilized and empowered citizens to take action to improve the monitoring of the health of ocean and waters and to act against pollution. Promoting of digital applications and testing kits, enabling citizens to collect data and, and observations and promoting digital data collection and participation, participatory research involving citizens for the monitoring uh, of ocean and waters, standardized protocols, standardized test, test, testing procedures for citizen reporting and locally relevant programs, as well as contribution to um, special data layer for data provided by citizens, including real-time recording of uh, discharges and levels of pollutants and litter from different sites for the EMODMAT and therefore also for the European Digital Twin Ocean that would be also aligned with the D Destination Earth Initiative of the Digital Europe Programme. So, in terms of scope, that's the next slide, please. Proposals should identify and pilot best practices in citizen science to restore our ocean and waters, and uh, also their upscaling across member states and associated countries. The data collected should support the monitoring requirements under the Water Framework Directive and Marine Strategy Framework Directive, and uh, should follow their specific monitoring guidelines. Collected data should be made accessible across member states and associated countries. I would like to stress that the activities should include development of standardized protocols and testing procedures for citizen reporting and also locally relevant programs uh, to demonstrate their application. The proposals should contribute to an increasing understanding about uh, certain issues such as effectiveness of citizen science for participatory research and innovation, impact of citizen science campaigns on citizens' behavior and knowledge in relation to ocean and waters. Also, potential contribution of certain specific stakeholders would be uh, appreciated, such as those of fishermen, sailors or recreational divers, and differences in gender behavior around ecologically uh, conscious and sustainable practices should be taken into account and addressed where appropriate in the proposals. 
Um, the proposals should connect citizens and local communities with ocean and sea and waters, empower citizens, and include education and training activities and citizen science campaign that should draw on art, media, and culture. Indicative budget is 1 million euros, and uh, expected number of grants is one, so per project contribution is also 1 million euros. The important aspects here to stress are youth empowerment and engagement, links with Digital Twin Ocean and uh, ModNet, links with European Solidarity Corps also, because they could be involved in these activities, as well as emphasis on social innovation for the health of uh, ocean and waters and for citizens' stewardship of ocean and waters. So this is all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Elena. And now we arrived at uh, the time when you have the possibility to address your uh, last questions uh, today. Um, if we will not be able to answer to all the questions, you have here an email address. You can always uh, uh, write us. Uh, we'll develop the frequently asked questions and uh, we'll base on uh, everything that you, we hear from you today. So let's start with the first questions that were uh, addressed. Um, and uh, Zoe, maybe you can start, but uh, just one thing, because it was something that was mentioned. Uh, as it is, uh, it was streamed on YouTube, the recording will be available on YouTube. So if you want to go back and listen again to the presentation, uh, it will be possible to, to be done. Now, let's go to the questions on the digital twin. Uh, and uh, maybe Zoe, you can uh, start with uh, the first ones. Yes, I will start with the additional eligibility conditions uh, that apply. I uh, So the general uh, eligibility conditions of the call are described with all of the rest in Annex B of the uh, work program and will be published with the call. Uh, but the two uh, that are exceptional in this case is that if there is a use of uh, satellite uh, Earth observations, the systems of the Commission mentioned should be included. So uh, it should be Copernicus and it should be uh, um, uh, it, uh, Copernicus and uh, Galileo, EGNOS, uh, uh, that should be used if satellite uh, data use is done. And regarding the participation of JRC, is that for this specific call, the participation of JRC in the consortium is allowed. So it's not necessary, but in case that the consortium is built this way, JRC can participate as a, a member of the consortium. Thank you very much, Zoe. We have a question as, as well linked to the uh, demonstration demonstrators that have to be included inside the proposal or are the models expected only to support external demonstrator lighthouse? Maybe Fabian, you can uh, support us with uh, with this question. Uh, yes, yes. For in the in the call related to the models, the demonstration and demonstrator. In fact, the purpose is first to validate the models that will be developed and will be proposed in the context of the digital twin ocean, and they are used by the by the lighthouses. So, it won't be demonstration to make applications or to, to make use cases. It's really about validating the digital concept of the twin, validating the models and validating the type of digital services that we can have with this kind of model. Uh, it can be linked to the lighthouses uh, since the projects can interact between them and, uh, um, and then validation can be also prepared with the lighthouses if, if needed. But the, the purpose is to verify the end-to-end uh, functions, I would say, and, and work of the digital twin ocean with the models in the, in the digital architecture. Thank you very much, Fabian. Um, I think as well that we have uh, um, quite uh, a few minutes left, so uh, even at a certain point from uh, uh, the previous presentations, uh, you can address your questions. But still, there are uh, already uh, some that uh, we need to answer. Uh, one is looking if there is, it's asking if there is a networking space where a partner uh, can try to find uh, um, 
uh, other, let's say, members of the consortium in order to be able to, to build it and to participate in calls. Um, it will be another presentation that it will be done in the afternoon. Our colleagues from uh, CINEA uh, are working on this. So uh, maybe if you are present this afternoon, uh, you can address this question because this has to be done not only for the mission Ocean, but for all missions. Uh, if not, we'll take care to include it in the frequently asked question. Unfortunately, uh, we are not back in the days when the big gathering in uh, the Commission premises allowed people to uh, uh, to exchange. Hopefully, we'll go back to uh, that moment soon. But until then, of course, with our colleagues from CINEA, we'll uh, try to create the condition in order for you to uh, find the partners for the consortium. Nevertheless, pay attention because it was mentioned the deadline is quite short. I think that probably being today in the mid of January for the proposals that you are going to build, some partners should be already identified. Maybe you have already uh, for sure in your object of activity some which you can already start working and build, adding what is needed, what is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, still missing in order to be able to have the consortium. Um, there are some other uh, uh, questions, Elena, linked to the citizen science part. Maybe uh, you would like to, to take this relation with the citizen actions and the lighthouses? Thank you, Andrea. Sure. Uh, so, uh, in terms of the lighthouses, there we are referring to the uh, innovation actions. They also are um, suggested to uh, consider a citizen science initiative. That means, um, where possible, to have uh, citizens uh, contribute to the demonstration projects of the lighthouses. This is obviously a different action from the, the topic and the actions that I have just been presenting. So the idea is not to include the project that would be that would be taking place under the uh, under the coordination and support action for piloting citizen science and include it in the in the mission lighthouse. That's not the idea. These are two separate projects. However, they can be linked and it would be strongly encouraged to build such links together with the CSAs per uh, lighthouse basin as well as with the uh, innovation action projects. So uh, two separate actions. However, links are very much encouraged and very much supported and certainly are similarly supported also exchanges of information and best practices. Thank you very much, Elena. A question for Roberta now. Um, if we can give some example of initiative already in the field that a study should help reshape and recalibrate. Uh, well, I think that the uh, rationale of, uh, of the foresight study is not to identify initiatives which are already in place, but to have uh, a better understanding of uh, needs and expectations uh, of, uh, of the young generation. And then uh, try to see how best uh, these needs and these expectations can be addressed also through initiatives which are already in place uh, that uh, might need to be adjusted to really address uh, uh, their expectations. So uh, the idea is not to have, as I said, the, the list of initiatives supporting young generation uh, in, and, and their relation with the, with the sea and water is, can be very, very long. But the question to be answered is, uh, do we really understand their needs, expectation, and are we able to address them? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Roberta. Then can GRC participate in the proposal preparation or is to be included in the consortium after uh, uh, it could be included after the consortium received the confirmation uh, of the financing from the Commission? Um, I think uh, my colleagues dealing with the topic can uh, can uh, can add. But uh, of course, uh, if there is a consortium to receive a financing, for sure that in this development of the idea, GRC should be part. So it's not uh, added uh, uh, as an external piece of the consortium uh, after. So uh, normally they should be, uh, of course, uh, included uh, in the in the preparation. Um, another one uh, linked to if uh, is there something 
foreseen to enhance the ocean observation capability ERICS. Maybe Zoe or Fabian can take this one. Not in the framework of this call is the answer on this. Okay, so, uh, so this is what we are answering at the moment. So this topic, no. Okay. Thank you very much, Zoe. Then another one for the Ocean 0502 is this call social science areas focused or multidisciplinary? So I think this is Elena. It can be very well uh, multidisciplinary. Uh, it depends on uh, the approach which is proposed uh, and developed uh, by, by the applicants. Okay. Thank you very much, Roberta. Um, I think we are advising quite um, quite well. Uh, it, as we have some time, yes, thank you very much, Sandra. Already, let's see some uh, some of the calls that we previously didn't have the opportunity to answer. Uh, are there more calls planned in the future under the Danube Lighthouse? If so, when? Um, we mentioned at a certain point that the next World Program uh, will be the World Program 2022. Uh, it will be adopted probably somewhere uh, in May. So we are continuing the logic of working on the sea basin, on the river basin. So uh, for sure that this uh, development, looking at the Europe from the uh, different sea basins and interactions between river and sea is going to be continued. The idea is, of course, to see how uh, we are building, as I said, a critical mass of actor solutions that can offer us the base for further dissemination and replication in order to pass in the second phase, which start in 2025, with uh, uh, replication. So um, we cannot say what in the next call, but for sure uh, you are going to see that the work is going to continue on all the basins that are mentioned because the orientation is coming from the implementation plan and all the work programs are going to transpose the strategic orientation through the actions that are considered in the, the, the work uh, program. Um, I don't know uh, if uh, anything else is to, to be added here. Roberta, you would like to add something? No? Okay. Uh, there, was, was, there, are, there was one question linked to the Atlantic and Arctic I saw with Brazil and Canada. Um, the mission is aiming with this uh, sea basin, of course, uh, to build um, capacity to uh, apply to demonstrate innovation in Europe, starting with European countries. It does not mean that other parts are not eligible. In the same time, uh, try to understand that the first objective, as I said, is to allow the change to happen in Europe first. Brazil and Canada and some other countries, of course, they, they can participate. Uh, any country can participate in the calls. Uh, of course, they are not going to receive financing. Only the countries that have the status of associated countries associated to Horizon, they will have the possibility to be engaged. In the same time, think as well uh, how you can uh, develop this, answering first and trying to, um, uh, to show uh, to the evaluators that the conditions as mentioned in the call in the call were firstly uh, answered uh, and of course in an excellent uh, uh, way so the missions are built in order to have a new relevant impact first so this is something also to uh, to have in mind uh, then um, it was another question, if we can see them, maybe Sandra. Must an associated region include a member state, associated country, or can it be country outside of Europe, Africa? 
It comes a little bit in the idea of the previous question. Of course, that pollution in Mediterranean, it's not something that uh, it's going to be addressed and it's going to be solved on the on European side. Nevertheless, as, uh, as uh, previously mentioned, the impact should be first and the action taken at the level of the European Union countries. Now, uh, an associated region, of course, uh, uh, can go uh, and you can look at the sea basin and depending as well on the sea basin because Mediterranean is quite specific and probably going to a country that is an associated one or even let's say that has a strong uh, interest try nevertheless when you are building it associated and you are bringing these associated regions in to think at really at the benefit, the value added and showing what exactly is going to bring value by bringing these uh, uh, regions in. It's quite important that these regions is not there only to, uh, for a, a project, uh, uh, a proposal to be able to tick a box, we have these regions, but it's important to be able to uh, 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 really to show uh, the impact that is creating by bringing them uh, in. So think and do not forget the impact of each of the action of each of the development of the consortium and the actions that are foreseen. It's extremely uh, important. Um, I think we have uh, probably a couple, okay. Um, do you know if more calls will be published on 2023 on uh, um, on objective in ocean mission? I mean, uh, Horizon Europe uh, will continue. Uh, nevertheless, of course, uh, as uh, uh, the work programs are passing, we have to be able uh, to uh, show and to build the impact that uh, the results that are needed in order for the uh, mission to be successfully uh, evaluated. So um, yes, uh, 2023, it's going to be another work program. Uh, and we have one last question. Uh, what role would you expect for the existing communities? Uh, example, the, the kicks. Uh, the kicks are really valuable communities that can bring in the proposals uh, member of course of the of the consortium we mentioned previously uh, that uh, here i mean we are speaking about another form of support the projects are bigger the projects are integrated the projects need to show the collaboration among various uh, actors that can bring together an innovative action and showing the impact on a quite uh, larger scale so um, try to to think from from this uh, perspective try to be as i said as inclusive as possible try to build across europe and uh, send us good proposals this is what we need in order to really give a uh, uh, successful future to to the mission ocean i think that we exhausted the question for today uh, as i said we will take all of them will build a frequently asked questions that is going to be published on the mission website you have the email address uh, please do not hesitate to send them to us nevertheless have in mind that if you want an answer to be included in the frequently asked questions probably do not ask at the end of march but try to send us uh, your uh, questions as soon as possible we'll be happy to uh, uh, to support and uh, we end earlier. Um, I think that really you found uh, useful uh, information in everything that was communicated today. And as I see uh, John Bell, Director uh, in Digital Research and Innovation here connected, I'll be pleased to give him the floor for the concluding part of the info day uh, of uh, today for the Mission Ocean. Thank you very much for all uh, of you who are attending today on, on YouTube. Thank you very much, Andrea, and thank you, colleagues, for, I think, a, 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 an excellent uh, presentation at a critical moment in our great mission for the oceans. And I'd like to thank all of the participants, wherever you are uh, around the continent of Europe or, or beyond that, uh, for participating in this session and for your interest in applying to the new calls for these proposals on this great EU mission on oceans and waters. And you probably are clear now that it's 
unusual the mission to have an opportunity to build something which needs people like you to participate in every possible way, starting with the coals and then building this change, this transformation, this movement for transition for our li main life support system uh, as a critical part of the big transition that we have to make uh, in the years ahead to a climate neutral, environmentally sustainable and fair and just uh, uh, part of our planet. So thank you for choosing to be members of a joint mission. Your work is part of a big collective endeavour to restore our oceans and waters. You'll be part of creating that vision in the way that you respond. From the European Commission side, we're committed over a decade to mobilise our networks, our instruments and our available tools to make tangible change and to achieve the targets of this mission. We are going to get there, but we need you to make it possible. We're committed to developing and to deploying research, innovation and other solutions to restore the health of our oceans and waters. We're committed to providing access to authoritative knowledge to those actors and needed to make the transformations happen on the ground. Local authoritative knowledge for transition will be critical to building the, the pathways that we need to the future. We're committed to mobilise broadly, to equip citizens with the means to take action for change. We can't underline this enough. You'll have seen that in the way in which the call is set up. This has to be co-created with people on the ground. We're committed to building a dynamic investment ecosystem so that the best solutions will have access to finance for scaling up and rolling out. And this is a critical aspect of the mission, that together we're better, that what we learn, we share, we help everybody to make the journey more quickly, more safely, more inclusively. We're committed to building and convening a community of practice for the restoration of oceans and waters. And by applying, you have chosen to become part of this mission community. Welcome on board. A community of practice is critical here. We need to move from simply thinking in terms of projects and programs and partnerships and uh, all the rest of it to what that is to bring, a stable and developing and deep and democratic community of practice. So can I encourage participants to connect, to exchange, to do what you do best, to cooperate beyond your traditional partners and the research innovation communities? This is a really important message. The changes that we need to make here in harnessing the research and innovation that we're commissioning will require bringing actors from other areas of policy, of citizenship, of economic activity, of investment, of local government and so forth. So try and think about how best you can do that. The mission calls for innovation first in the way we work. So you need to consider all the relevant actors who are necessary to restore the ocean and waters when building your consortia. Uh, this is important obviously for the evaluation but it's important as well for the delivery of change and the missions are principally about delivery we're not here to think about what could be or should be or may be done this is about making change happen and the agents of change the people who you know where you come from who are necessary to make that change happen by default include them now practically speaking just to reiterate again the deadline for submitting proposals is the 12th of April 2022. Um, you know that we will support the launch of the lighthouses with a number of key drivers. Firstly, a baseline study for each lighthouse. Secondly, a lighthouse implementation charter to bring member states and regional engagement and commitment to the objectives of the mission within the areas of the lighthouses and within the objectives of the mission and to mobilise partners, citizens, actors towards the implementation and the ownership of the lighthouse. This isn't about the European Commission. This is about where you live and where you work and the changes that we need to make together to be in the best possible place by the end of the decade. We will create, thirdly, a portfolio of projects for the development of solutions to be tested and deployed at sea basin scale through different tools of Horizon Europe and with the activities of other EU programmes. And fourthly, coordination and support actions for executing and monitoring the implementation of the mission objectives on a basin uh, level. So there's a lot that will be in place to make a success of this, but the first thing is to count on your involvement. 
Um, we must start the process of co-creating the implementation charters. And with this, we're organizing a side event on the 8th of February during the French presidency's One Ocean Summit. This is a critical event. If you're one of the people involved or your superiors or people involved in the invitation to that, I strongly, strongly urge you to ensure that they participate in person at the most senior level. The aim of this event is to mobilize key partners, such as member states and regional key stakeholders for preparing the commitments for an implementation charter in view of activating the lighthouses of the mission that we talk about today. So that's really about how are you and the places that you come from going to take ownership of the work of the missions and bring together all the different resources uh, that you have in terms of your people, your activities, your departments, your governments, your actors. So it's very, very important that the right people are at this meeting on the 8th of February. I underline the charter is not, uh, it's not a legal um, um, process. We're not in here looking for legality. We're looking for mobilization. It will not be a legally binding document. We'll commit the partners politically to cooperating, aligning and mobilizing resources to achieve the three mission specific objectives in the sea basins where you live and work. We'll encourage all stakeholders willing to support the mission objectives and capable of contributing to its success to endorse the charter. Think about that. Who are all stakeholders? Who are the people most in need of having their voice heard in determining how we take this mission forward where you live and work? A further amendment of the Horizon Work Programme is scheduled for spring this year. So as you can see, the commitment of resources is, is actually being taken forward quite quickly to include the calls for 2022. A call for expression of interest to establish the new mission boards, which have an advisory function in the process and which have done such an outstanding job under the leadership of Pascal Lamy, is currently open with a deadline of the 5th of February, 2022. So I'd invite stakeholders who have the right kind of profile to consider this opportunity and to spread the information to possibly interested candidates. These have been very distinguished people who really have an insight that is very helpful to us in terms of framing the work that we do as we move forward. I stress the importance again of engaging all of your colleagues, all Europeans to help catalyze the changes needed to restore our oceans and waters. We're running out of time. We know that from the work that we're looking at in science and climate and biodiversity, but we're not running out of ideas. And the point of the mission is to make a decisive change in the outcomes and in the prospects, not just for our oceans and waters and the ecosystems and the economies and the cities and the communities that are there, but particularly for the people uh, who will be living uh, and working in these spaces in the years to come. So your participation is important, not simply in the calls, but as the future citizens of the mission destination that together we are trying to build. And I thank you again for your time, for your patience, for your interest in our mission. I encourage you to apply and to participate. And I thank all my colleagues who've made such an effort to prepare this. There's a lot of work goes on behind the scenes to make this happen. And I thank them all, my colleagues in RTD and in Marne and in the agencies who've been so supportive in Sinea and that to make today happen. And I wish you a very good day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.